from Hawaii, and it arrived here sooner than he did. Yeah. But yeah, welcome to How Good Is 2019, and uh, great to be here at this incredibly historical club, um, and uh, great to be here in Marrickville, uh, the centre of the universe. And you just heard my very first and possibly my very last songwriting collaboration with Scott Morrison. <laughs> and we're pleased to know that ScoMo talks in the key of D minor. Well, I checked Malcolm Turnbull, he talks in C minor. So C minor, D minor. If I can find a politician who talks in E minor, I've predicted the next Australian Prime Minister. Now, before we start our shows these days, we always Google to make sure that Scott Morrison is still the Prime Minister. <laughs> and sadly, he is. It's good to know that a party that changed leaders three times in six years won the election. How good are Aussie voters? And how good is 2019, the year when the election gave us ScoMo, the ALP gave us Albo, and Brexit gave us Bojo. <laughs> a perfect time for us, Joe Show and Simo, <laughs> to be doing political satire. It's a time when Tony Abbott, the budgie smuggler himself, actually lost his appeal. And so did Cardinal George Pell. It's a time when Clive Palmer spent $60 million and didn't gain a single seat. And that's what we call money well spent. <laughs> it's a time when the Minister for Emissions Reduction, Angus Taylor, known as Angus Horribilis, hasn't reduced any emissions, but he has accused Sydney City Council of increasing their carbon footprint by spending $16 million on air travel. When the actual figure was $6,000. It's a time when Prince Andrew has been put on light duties. 
now that's a right royal stuff up. <laughs> it's a time when the Westpac Bank has been taken to the cleaners. For laundering money. <laughs> not once, not twice. But, but 23 million times. It's a time when the government's ensuring integrity bill was so full of integrity that not even Pauline Hanson could vote for it. <laughs> and it's a time when the federal election gave us the 46th Parliament. Now, I've been looking through the names of the politicians in our current Parliament and have found that amongst them there are... Two Smiths, one Jones and one Brown. Two Kellys, two Kings, two Butlers. A Waters and a Fawcett. <laughs> a Bird, a Hawk, a Swanson and a Gosling. A Shorten, a Broadbent and a Broad. A Little Proud and a Good Enough. <laughs> a Wood and a Hill. A Lambing, a Lambie and a Merino. <laughs> a Lee, a Lay and a Loo. <laughs> a Wyatt and a Wong. A Hanson Young and a Hanson Old. <laughs> a Price and a Cash. One Payne, one Burke and one Dick. <laughs> Actually, I think there's more than one dick. <laughs> Proof that our current parliament may contain traces, traces of nuts. <laughs> now, we see our job as satirists to have a go at the government, whoever's in charge, although we don't like to leave the opposition out. But six months ago, when we were contemplating our end of year show, we were convinced that they would actually be doing a show about the Labour Party, led by... Our boy Bill, yes, our boy Bill. You have an obvious skill, Bill, for going in for the kill, Bill. Just like a pterodactyl, Bill, in a leadership spill. But when you switch to vaudeville, Bill, you're not exactly Churchill, Bill. I'd say you're pretty dull as Bill, Bill, no longer our boy, Bill. Your campaign manager's Bill, Bill, the cost to you it was nil, Bill. You say it's run of the mill, Bill, a case of simple goodwill. But then you slid us downhill, Bill, you were on the nostril, Bill, you tried overkill, Bill. Our boy Bill, our boy Bill, lost the unlosable, lost the lot, not reusable, lost the plot, now refusable, lost to Scott, so let looseable but always will be our boy Bill. You were not happy until Bill, you doused the light on the hill, Bill, fell off the top of the no Cecil de Mill, and now you're off the treadmill, Bill. Your dreaming never fulfilled, Bill. Your mountain was a mole hill, Bill. No longer our boy, Bill. Our boy, Bill. Queensland pro coal. A Downey, yes. Melbourne, no coal. What a bloody mess. Climate change policy. Anybody's guess. There's so many reasons we had our fill of our boy Bill. Our boy Bill. <laughs> Poor old Bill of the Labour Party first started wondering what went wrong with the unlosable election. They blamed him for everything. But I'm glad he's not the Prime Minister because I just used up all the rhymes available in the rhyming dictionary for Bill, so I could not have ever written another song about him. And, and now to that tedious, arduous, six-week election campaign, and all we got to show at the end of it was more of Scott Morrison as Prime Minister. But he did get to prove his worth when, a couple of months ago, he took himself off to America to meet with the Donald. And great natural statesman that ScoMo is, instead of attending the climate change summit at the United Nations, he visited a cardboard box factory and a smart drive through Maccas. The United Nations ha has actually declared this year, 2019, as the International Year of the Periodic Table. 
So we wonder what element best describes Scott Morrison. Could it be how good him? No. Mediocrium? Mm -hmm. Certainly not Einsteinium. No. But Mr. Trump chose titanium. John Howard was a man of steel. Scott Morrison is stronger than steel, but more lightweight. A titanium man. Faster than a shark's prop forward, more powerful than a man of steel. His leadership is so straightforward, just listen to his ad man spiel. Our very own Cronulla Polly, our happy clappy family man. Wild man and suburban Wally, that's our titanium man. Titanium man. He's burning for us every titanium day, man. for the entire population. Titanium man. Except for when he runs away from the United Nations. The Donald and his team of backers, they found a thing for Scott to do. They sent him to the local Maccas to drive through a smart drive through. But it's hard to eat a quarter pounder when your head's buried in the sand. Harder still to be a good all rounder like our titanium man. Says that he is on our side. That's his famous proclamation. Titanium man. Except for when he runs and hides from the United Nations. Nations. Cardboard boxes of Anthony Pratt and a Trump like rally. Well, that's where it's at. Not the rising sea levels or the melting ice caps. No, a Swedish teenager took care of that. Titanium man. He has no time for. Titanium man. He wants to save us from damnation. Titanium man. Except for when he slams Titanium the lid man. on the United Nations. Titanium man. Titanium man. Titanium man. Mediocrium scomonium. Now back to the Labour Party, and in the wake of their devastating defeat, the job of clawing the party back to being competitive again has been placed in the hands of their new leader, a man known affectionately by the name of Albo. But Albo was given little Albo room by his party. Oh. When, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, should be. When, he spent, when, when the party <laughs> spent months and months and months soul searching, asking the difficult questions. But after all that, there's still one vitally important question that remains unanswered. Albo, your party lost in the last election. Your stakes are low. Your stakes are low. And so, I have a little list of questions for you, Albo. For you, Albo. Your name. Oh, if you would, could you announce it to make it plain? To make it plain. Then we could do our dandies to pronounce it. What is your name? What is your name? Elbo, Elbo, will you help us, please? Albanese, or is it Albanese? Or Albanese, or Albanese, Albanese, Albanese. We think we're going crazy, Albo, will you help us, please? <laughs> Albo, your party's doing rather badly, but you won't crash. No, you won't crash. As long as you get plastic bags from Aldi, repeat with cash. Repeat with cash. Albo, you could improve your poll position, get good reviews. Get good reviews. If you could clear up your name recognition, but we're confused. We're so confused. Albo, Albo, will you help us please? Albanese, or is it Albanese? Or Albanese, or Albanese, Albanese, Albanese. Can you make it easy, Albo? Will you help us please?
Israel Folau. I always get that response whenever I say those two words. Israel Folau, great footballer, Christian fundamentalist, who upset the apple cart this year when he posted this on Instagram. Drunks, homosexuals, adulterers, liars, fornicators, thieves, atheists, idolaters. Hell awaits you. Repent, only Jesus saves. Now it was Mark Twain who once said, go to heaven for the climate, hell for the company. <laughs> and based on that list, I think I tend to agree with him. who fornicate you may not be the highest on the list at the pearly gates non-believers drunkards who gaily copulate don't you look cute in your asbestos suit adulterers and robbers lesbians and gays Israel and his commas say if you don't change your ways you and all your wicked types, all Satan will flambe. You'll be hell-bent, lest you repent. Which only goes to prove the words we know so well. Go to heaven for the climate, but for the company, go to hell. Idolaters and fibbers, you who are not devout, the misguided and the sinners, you'll all be missing out. The permissive and promiscuous, your future's not in doubt. You're in the shite, lest you see the light. Which only goes to prove the words we know so well. Go to heaven for the climate, but for the company, go to hell. saves with the Commonwealth, <laughs> Westpac, Nava, and ANZ. With every dollar, every cent, he says, repent, 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 or you'll find yourselves in the red. Which only goes to prove the words we know so well. Go to heaven for the climate, but for the company, go to hell. And now for something completely different, some Trumpisms of 2019. <laughs> First, on describing himself. I am a man of great and unmatched wisdom. <laughs> on his vision for the future. I love the concept of buying green land. <laughs> on the conflict with Iran. I never called the strike against Iran off, I just stopped it from going forward. On the Turkish invasion of Syria. They got a lot of sand over there. <laughs> and in a tweet which he sent while he was visiting Britain earlier in the year. I just met the Queen of England and the Prince of Wales. Except he spelt Wales W-H-A-L-E-S. <laughs> Mr. Trump, he came to Britain. With him we were hardly smitten. Came to London, but he didn't come to visit Wales. Met the Queen and met Theresa. Spoke of Brexit, tried to please her. Since he could not meet with Caesar, he met the Prince of Wales. But when I saw his tweeting, the prince that he was meeting was 90 feet long and 10 feet wide with a layer of blubber for his heating and a blowhole for his respiration, a dorsal fin for stabilization. 
Warm blooded was his conversation with the Prince of Wales. That was the Prince when he met him. The themes that Prince spoke of were ranging from greenhouse gas to climate changing. Trump tried seating the arranging to avoid the Prince of Wales. But the Prince, he made a small commotion about the warming of the ocean. If you don't act, said he with emotion, there'll be no Prince when I heard that uh, Trump had actually done that, it was a gift to a songwriter. So I said to Moya, I've got this idea of writing this song about, you know, meeting with a whale, and I wondered if you could sing like a whale. And she said, of course I can't, don't be ridiculous. And the next day I caught her on YouTube. <laughs> this is the final result. And there's more where that came from. Um, now, um, the Spring Racing Carnival took place as usual this year, but under something of a cloud after the 7.30 program on the ABC actually uh, aired a story that indicated that there was wholesale slaughter and general mistreatment of retired racehorses. Uh, there were celebrities who boycotted, events were cancelled, and there were protests held outside the racetracks and at the Melbourne Cup Carnival. Bring me a little tax cut now. Bring 
me little tax cuts go low. It's good for me, but I can't see how. In religious freedom, ScoMo. Bring religious freedom now. Bring religious freedom, ScoMo. To please the fans of Israel for loud. Bring me media freedom, ScoMo. Bring me media freedom time. Bring me media freedom, ScoMo. Journalism is not a crime. ScoMo came a running, front page in his hand. Every word had been redacted, whistleblowers blown from the land. Redacted version, bring me ScoMo, bring me time, bring me. Scomo, journalism, crime. Bring me little tax cuts, Scomo. Bring religious freedom, Scomo. Bring me media freedom, Scomo. Every little once in a while. There are about 50 people in Canberra and I've been trying to teach them that rhythm for about six months and I now don't think anyone is speaking to me. <laughs> the numbers have dropped off. Yeah. <laughs> At the third stroke, it will be 9, 25 and 20 seconds. Beep, beep, beep. This talking clock phone service was introduced in Britain in 1936. It took us a little while to catch on to the idea here in the Antipodes, 1953, we got it. Fast forward to the present time, and this service still continues in Britain with 30 million calls in a year. But here in Australia, Telstra decided this year to end the service on October the 1st. It seems for Telstra, time had run out as it had for 11,000 climate scientists, who not long ago declared that... At the third stroke, there will be a climate change emergency. Beep, beep, beep. <coughs> and I can't believe how many times I still saw it today in the paper. How many times since then I've heard this mantra over and over again. Australia is responsible for only 1.3% of global emissions, so anything we do is too small to make a difference. Well, Mr Morrison, Heed the words of the Dalai Lama. Anyone who thinks they're too small to make a difference has never spent the night in a room with a mosquito.
suggest you do in the short interval that we're going to have is stock up on drinks because after very many years of doing this, we've found out that the more you drink, the more you will enjoy us. <laughs> and um, I've actually written songs about every Australian Prime Minister, all 30 of them, even the ones that were in for a week. And we're going to end this act with, um, the, the first half at least, with um, a, one of those songs that pays tribute to a Prime Minister who died this year in May, days before the federal election, sparing him the agony of Labor's defeat. I speak, of course, of the Larrikin Prime Minister himself, the silver bodgy, Mr Robert J Hawke. Now, Bob's mum always said that their family Bible used to often fall open on Isaiah 9, chapter 6. For unto us a child is born, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. <laughs> unto us a boy is born, a baby boy whose parents sent. The Bible says it's so. He will lead the government, and so his destiny is as clear as baby poo. He knows what he has to be, oh Lord, and he knows what he has to do. Well, he must do, like a bodgy do. He must give up the grog for you, even leave the ACTU to do like a bodgy do. And as a boy is born, a boy is born to run the show in a larrikin kind of way. Yes, the Bible says it's so. His path, it is writ large and as loud as a baby's cry. He knows what he has to do, oh Lord, when a tear comes to his eye. He must sob bum, bum, bum. like a bodgy sob. Bum, bum, bum. He must bark bum, bum, bum. like a drover's dog. Bum, bum, bum. Spout the gospel. Bum, bum, bum to bow and so like a bodgy song with each shed of a tear with each blink of an eye with each pull of an ear watch the poles go high 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 high
live on 40 bucks a day. Have a drug test anyway. And do some Morrison dancing. Go to Paris, steal the show. In the canter, heel and toe. Praise the Lord and do si do. And do some Morrison dancing. Shortest to do Morris dancing. <laughs> but as soon as I heard it was Morrison dancing, you couldn't stop me. Where did you get the bells? <laughs> well, from Morrison dancing to Pauline Hanson, the woman who dyed her hair to match the colour of her neck. The woman who, just when you think she's going to go away, always comes back. And this year was no exception when a couple of her One Nation colleagues were in America, a little bit under the weather, and they were caught on camera by Al Jazeera, apparently being very happy to receive donations from the National Rifle Association, the NRA. Well, we were thrilled when Pauline assured us that... I have never sought donations or political guidance from the NRMA. <laughs> now I say to all Australians, let me make it very clear about the Al Jazeera doco on TV. It's a film made by aliens, the stitch up of the year. They put the con into conspiracy. James and Steve were as pissed as parrots. Don't believe a word you heard them say. I'm so distraught, cause I've never, never ever sought donations from the NRMA. <laughs> the media doesn't like me, well except for Alan Jones and Andrew Bolton all on Sky TV. But Q and A gets spiky when they hear my dulcet tones. Just proves that we should sell the ABC. Someone's out to destroy one nation in this disgusting expose. An Islamic plot, cause I never, never ever got donations from the NRMA. I always keep my distance and I'll not be towed by roadside assistance. No battery flat, no faulty indicator, dodgy thermostat or boiling radiator. There'll be no green slip, no insurance claim, no reason I should please explain. Stay away in RMA. Taking money from the biggish end of town Big business, it'll pass my party by Well, unless it is a downy, generosity abounds My support for fossil fuels they can buy On old Burkers Green is an immigration I'll stay firm forever and a day But as I speak, I will never, never ever seek Donations from the inner really did say that <laughs> Now ladies and gentlemen, you may despair of Australian politics, you may despair of American politics, but spare a thought for my fellow pawns <laughs> dealing with Boris Johnson and Brexit. Now my um, <clears throat> British passport's about to run out and if I renew it, I have no idea whether I'm going to get a European passport or back to good old Great Britain. And now we're landed with bonking Boris himself, <laughs> Bojo the Clown, they call him. The whole thing really is nothing but a dog's 
Brexit. <laughs> come along, Pedro, come on, come on, sit. Good dog, now eat your breakfast. So you're feeling a little peckish, need a brekkie or maybe brunch. Don't you order the continental? It'll only spoil your lunch. Now go for the full English. Keep it undignified, cause it's a dog's Brexit. Poached, scrambled, fried. Two small items on the menu. One of them is take away. If you don't like that, well then you can stay in the cafe. Whatever your decision to go or stay inside, it's still a dog's Brexit. Heel, shit, no deal. Run, Bojo, run. Come, Bojo, come. Now it's time for obedience classes, Bojo. Now, no humping that French poodle or that dachshund. And stay away from that Irish setter who stole your balls last week. I told you not to sniff his backstop. When you've knocked back your German sausage and refused your French baguette, all you're left with are your kippers and a cuppa to keep your nose wet. Now you're back for a second helping. One thing that cannot be denied, it's still a dog's Brexit. Poached. Scrambled fried. I said it's still a dog's Brexit with an election on the side. Ladies and gentlemen, the parts of the dog, the mosquito, and the whale have played, been played tonight by Ms. Moya Simpson. <laughs> and now back to Australian politics. And during that long, arduous election campaign, how many times did you hear ScoMo describing Bill Shorten like this? The bill you can't afford. <laughs> And how many times did you hear him assure us that it was only the coalition who was well placed to manage the economy? Is that why they spent millions of dollars reopening Christmas Island? For a family of four. But have no fear, because the treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, has managed to sneak in a surplus budget. Another budget smuggler. <laughs> Jobs and growth slowing, interest rates down. Roll up. Roll up, the surplus is coming to town. Excitement and anticipation, wondrous what a thrill. The big drop it has been erected up on Capitol Hill. The murmur is electric as the word is spread around that the surplus is coming to town. See Frydenberg, the treasurer, complete with rubber neck. One hand quickly deals the cards, the other rings the deck. A master of the sleight of hand, he knows how to astound. Yes, the surplus is coming to town. His budget has not a spot of red. In fact, his budget is blacker than the night. 
fudge it, he simply flicks his head. And the lack of any stimulus is just an oversight. Next he walks the tightrope with a blindfold on his eyes. He cuts away the deficit, the clamour starts to rise. And then the books he juggles with the timing of a clown. Oh, the surplus is coming to town. In his budget, there's nothing he has missed. In fact, his budget, he rests his laurels on. Add to fudge it, he simply flicks his wrists. And the NDIS underspend magic gone. Everything is balanced, now how daring can he get? Or watch him on the high trapeze without a safety net. His hands are freely flying and his feet have left the ground. Yes, the surplus is coming to town. Yes, the surplus is coming to town. As you heard mentioned earlier, we come from a little town called Bungendore, which is uh, just near Canberra, but don't hold that against us. Um, and uh, Bungendore has finally felt the drought. Yes, we've finally got water restrictions. And when it was announced by the council, the council informed us that our water comes from a couple of boards. Well, we've been to the council meeting, <laughs> and we reckon there's more than a couple of boards on, on our local council, and they never dry up. But to worry you not good people because Pauline Hanson and Bob Catter went on a road trip together to affected areas. Now if that doesn't make the heavens open, what will? <laughs> now a little while ago, a couple of months maybe ago, on the Alan Jones show, don't worry I wasn't listening to it, I read this on, in the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, on the Alan Jones show there were a couple of, far no at first there was Scott Morrison being grilled by Alan Jones, he actually gave him a hard time about his response to the, to the, to the drought. And um, he had a tape of a couple of farmers who burst into tears with desperation when they spoke of their plights. And I found it actually very moving and it made me write this next song, which is loosely based upon a traditional children's playground game. <laughs> The farmer checks the well, the farmer checks the well. I ho the dairy yo, the farmer checks the well. The well is running dry, the well is running dry. E I -E -O. the well is running dry. Hi ho, hi ho, the dry is in the air. Is where they cry, on air is where they cry. Hi ho, the dairy -o. on air is where they cry. The cry is clearly heard, the cry is clearly heard. E -I -E -I -E -O. the cry is clearly heard. Hi oh, hi oh, the herd is fed by hand. Hi oh, hi oh, the herd is fed by hand. The hand is reaching out, the hand is reaching out. Hi ho the dairy o, the hand is reaching out. The farmer needs a life, the farmer needs a life. E I -E -I -E -O. the farmer needs a life. Another of the big stories of the year was the ban on the climbing to the top of the sacred site of Uluru. And on the day when the ban came into effect, there was an event held at Uluru to mark the occasion, and noticeably absent were the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, and the Minister for Indigenous Australians. Instead, to represent the government, Susan Lay, the Environment Minister, spoke but in her speech, she didn't mention once the reason she was there. The ban on the walk to the top of the rock. I wonder if she was told 
Don't mention the walk. <laughs> and where was Mr. Morrison? At a basketball match in Perth. Oh, give me a Prime Minister who's at the basketball, oh. Instead of being at Uluru to represent us all, oh. Who loves to don the green and gold? Whose itinerary's chock a block, go? Oh. Who knows the true significance of a sacred dream time rock, oh. Oh, give me a Prime Minister who loves a bit of sport, oh. Rugby union, rugby league, they all get his support, oh. Who picks up and runs with the ball. Who praises aspirations, oh. Except when they might give a voice to the people of First Nations, oh. Oh, give me a Prime Minister who cultivates the art, oh. Of dumbing down discussion on the statement from the heart, oh. Who loves all quiet Australians to make a contribution, oh, as long as it won't end up in the Aussie Constitution, oh. Well, we seem to live in a time when many people question um, why young people are not engaged in politics. And it's no wonder when you consider that the Minister for Youth is 61 years old. <laughs> that there's hardly any politicians under the age of 35. And that there have been six changes of Prime Minister in 12 years. Which means that no Australian under 30 has ever voted for a Prime Minister that lasted their full term. Now, every year, Around 75,000 school-aged students make the pilgrimage to Canberra, to Parliament House, to see democracy taking place firsthand. If <coughs> Parliament's in session, they go to question time. And alongside tragics like me, and I look up and I see them watching down on the bear pit and I think, no wonder they're not engaged. But they also get to visit the Parliamentary Education Office where they get to role play positions like the Speaker, the Prime Minister, the Opposition Leader. And they also experience firsthand the real job of Parliament, turning a thought bubble into a law. So here's to the future in the hands of our young people. And here's to the school excursion to Canberra. day we went the wrong way but all us kids enjoyed the drive do you recall the thrill of it all as we walked across the forecourt we're here to see how democracy's wheels go round wasn't it grand when we had to stand in line with all our school bags have to confess felt a little depressed with all those fellows in black with guns. But nobody died, we all got inside. Security was scary. We're here to see how democracy's wheels go round. Then we stood in line for question time and there was lots of shouting. Some of them left and some of them slept and some got sent outside the door. It sounded the same as one of our games, except no one blew a whistle. We're here to see how democracy's wheels go round. And wasn't it great when me and my mate were dressed just like the speaker. Pollies went by and some of them tried to talk to future voters like us. But one or two did acknowledge that kid who threw up in the Senate. We're here to see our democracy's wheels go round. We're here to see if democracy is still sound. But young people do get involved when it's an issue that touches them in some way. For instance, 65,000 registered to vote in the same-sex marriage plebiscite two years ago. And 300,000 in Australia alone marched in the streets and went on strike from school because of climate change in action. Because, after all, they are the ones who have to live with the consequences. 
So young people, there's only three demo, de demo days left before Christmas. <laughs> Tis the night before Christmas in Parliament House. Not a creature is stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings are hung by the backbencher's chair, now that our Tony is no longer there. The pollies are nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of focus groups dance in their heads. Elbows in a nightie that's lost all its colour, and scomos in PJs he bought in Cronulla. <laughs> when out on the lawn there arises a clatter, they spring from their beds to see what is the matter. Before their wondering eyes a display of 300,000 squashed in a sleigh. With Dasher and Dancer and Vixen and Prancer they've written a question and they want an answer. So to Capitol Hill, to the top of the flag, down the pole, old St. Nicholas slides with his bag. To Scobo and Albo, says, how do you do? Then as quickly as you can say, Manawatu, he gives them a note from the crowd in the sleigh, and then back up the pole, better be on my way, leaving them both to read as he flies out of sight. How dare you? How dare you? Merry Christmas. Good night. Just in case you've forgotten, I am John Shortus. And I'm Moya Simpson. Or rather, I am Sean Georges. And I'm Sawyer Mimpson. This is the story of our fearless leaders. No, this is the story of our Learless Feeders. <laughs> First Learless Feeder, a former mime printer, Oni Tabbitt. Oni Tabbitt, the smudgy buggler himself. Also known as One Prick Tony. <laughs> yep, One Prick Tony was in trick bubble at the election. And the voters told him to wisp off. <laughs> they did. But does his absence make the fart grow Honda? <laughs> I don't think so. And what about that other former mind printer, Talcum Nerdbull? <laughs> he thought he was a fart smeller. Yeah, he thought he was a fart smeller, but he was just a big piss of ointment. So he's gone back to being a belthy wanker. <laughs> well, you know what they say, the eager they bar, the farter they haul. <laughs> Meanwhile, rack at the bench, and we thought that the next mind printer would be Shield Borton. But we were red dong. <laughs> Shill Borton wanted to get rid of cranking fetters. Mm. And the voters were hot nappy. The voters were hot nappy. Trouble with Bill, he never knew when to up the shuck fuck. <laughs> yeah, Shill Borton, he poured the bants off us all. <laughs> poured the bants off us all, bopped his drundle, and the winner was Mott Scorison. <laughs> Now there's a pear squig and a hound roll. <laughs> Mott Scorison, Mosco. Clappy, happy, white ringer. <laughs> and speaking of white ringers... What about Dieter Putton? Isn't he a fuggly ucker? <laughs> and as for the shoovers and makers of the paper party... Wenny Pong, Boney Turk. They're in sheep did. Yeah, they're in sheep did. But now they've got a loo needer. They've got a loo needer. Ablo. Ah, the Pavelati. They thought they were going to have a hatal fart attack. <laughs> but will they make a bange for the cheddar? Or will they stay the same foreign old barts they were? <laughs> Nuck foes. <laughs> Nuck foes. At least we don't have trouble dump. Or Joris Bonson. Yeah. Let's hope that somebody somewhere can give us hoy in, in our, our jarts and soap in our holes. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why we never have a drink before a show. <laughs> Because you might get around the right way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But 
We're certainly going to have one soon because we're very close to the end of 2019 and we'd like to thank you all very, very much for coming out in this strange weather tonight to join with us and huge thanks to Sandra and company for inviting us and letting us into this great little venue. Thank you. <laughs> And so, this is our last show of the year. Yes. yes. We've, done, we've, we've done 10 of these shows yeah. in Wagga, in the South Coast, in uh, Bathurst, Bungadore, where we live, Canberra. You and now in the Sydney, and the Opera House yeah, yeah, next yeah. week. <laughs> so, in the tradition of political satire, we're going to finish with some parodies of well known songs that will cover news stories that we haven't covered yet. Like the Medivac Bill. Introduced to give medical treatment in Australia to people from Manus and Nauru. It was repealed just the other week, thanks to Jackie Lambie and a secret deal. And um, it was, a, it was a brought in originally by Karen Phelps and the support of her crossbenchers, Adam Bant, um, Andrew Wilkie, Julia Banks and Rebecca Sharkey. Rebecca Sharkey, had your fans there. The bands were pretty white And the jackknife had Julia Banks dear They all struck when the time was right Karen Feltz, yeah, and Andrew Wilkie Now their bill is going down All the line forms on the right, dear. Now that Medivac is out of town, Christmas Island is full of no one. Jackie Lambie's oozing life. See her sneaking around the corner when she gave Medivac the knife. Now some New South Wales news. We live actually in New South Wales, even though we're close to Canberra. And we came home one night after doing a gig to find an, on our answering machi machine a robo message from, of all people, Barnaby Joyce. It was horrible. Barnaby, he has just been on the phone to me. He wants abortion to be his dream. I can't believe. Abortion bills a mystery. Didn't know it's still a felony. I can't believe it's Barnaby. It's been years and years. All we wanted was a choice. There is something wrong with the voice of Barnaby Joyce. He's a bad smell that won't go away And it looks as though he's here to stay Still don't agree with Barnaby Bungadore recently, we signed up and it seems every second day we seem to get cut off. We went overseas recently, we came back to find that the landline number we'd had for 20 years, our work number, was just taken away from us by the NBN. No consultation, thank you very much, NBN. NBN, so now you've come to Bungadore and this village girl won't wait no more. in the dead of night and if the rate at which I bleed is slower than the speed of the internet I'm forever in your debt forever in your debt 
But when the end, the end came through, I lost a bit of faith in you. My landline went, I've lost my phone, so now I'm home, I'm home alone. In the end, most people would turn you away, but I don't listen to a word they say. And finally, rumours that Alexander Downer may be a left-wing spy have been revisited. It seems that the G&Ts he shared with the Trump campaigner were shaken, not stirred. Alexander is the spy, the spy in the fishnet tights. A wondrous sight is our Alexander. You to meet for some GNTs, then talks with ease. Down the words he will pour in your ear, but his tights can't disguise what you feel. For a Trump campaign will never miss him. He's the kiss of death, that's Mr. Alexander. Trump, remember that London night, his net is tight, fishnet tight, dressed to the right, fishnet tight. We'd like to have gone and hid away in the dressing room, but there's no dressing room, so <laughs> here we are. And um, this is, uh, we'd like to uh, do a song that was actually in last year's show. It's about Barnaby Joyce yet again, but um, we found out that up in his electorate in Armadale, Barnaby is known as the Ikea man. One screw in the wrong place and the whole cabinet falls apart. <laughs> so this is the ballad of Barnaby Joyce, Ikea man. Land, the very best the nationals had, but what he had in spades was blind ambition. So he made the mighty steps from the Senate to the reps in a hat much wider than his vision. Barnaby, he climbed a tree and he became the deputy, but then he changed the game. And so they changed his name And now they call him the Ikea man How well he plays the part Just one screw in the wrong place The whole cabinet falls apart Ikea man, ooh, Ikea man A more Aussie boy you'd never see Turns out he is a wee kiwi Thanks section 44 of the Constitution so he had to run again in New England, won again, the voters there all gave him absolution. So he climbed back up the tree and he remained their deputy, like farmers and their youths. He's gone back to his roots and now they call him the Ikea man, how well he plays the part. Just one screw in the wrong place. The whole cabinet 
falls apart like here man ooh like here man so let's just shift the furniture replace the leather seats everything's on the table but look between the sheets fold away the sofa bed move around the chairs or stick him in a flat back till he sorts out his affairs so now he's on the back back bench hopping mad his teeth are clenched made an envoy just to keep him happy there's no such thing as a free ride but it keeps him occupied sure beats changing baby's dirty nappy Barnaby is off his tree and someone else is deputy now he's in solitary without an allen key and they call him the Ikea man how well he plays the part just one screw in the wrong place the whole cabinet falls apart Ikea man, ooh, Ikea man, ooh, Ikea man, ooh, Ikea man. Thank you, Andrew Knight.